but at 2 or 2 in the morning. My phone rang, my chief of staff let me know that a ship yeah, yeah. that was the size of three football fields that was so heavy, no, it was a container ship, so it brings containers right. from right. port to port. Right. 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 Each one of those containers is about one and a half to two and a half tons. That ship, the Dolly, had 4,000 containers on it. That's how big this ship was. And now it slammed into one of the most iconic bridges inside of our state, how the Port of Baltimore, which is responsible for 13% of our economy, was now shut down. That we had tens of thousands of tons of steel that was now sitting at the bottom of the Patasco River, mangled. That we had a port that was closed, that by the way, tens of thousands of workers worked at that port. That a bridge that had over, around 40,000 people who crossed it every single day was now gone. And by the way, they also let me know that we had six bodies that were running out. And as I'm sitting there, I'm calling and I'm mobilizing, we're trying to get, we got the Maryland State Police, we got our divers in the water within an hour to try to save lives. The Maryland Transportation Police that were on the bridge, and I cannot say enough how important they have been because they saved countless lives that night. Yeah. And we were trying to figure out what we're gonna do with the fact that there are thousands of workers who now are about to wake up in a few hours and realize they do not have a job. And we're sitting there, we're mobilizing, we're moving things around, we're trying to make calls and trying to make sure that everybody is on task and on mission. My first phone call from the White House came at 3.30 that morning. Yes. And at a time when my job is to look at my state and to give them a sense of calm, to give them a sense of certainty, I cannot stress enough that from the very beginning of this, that's exactly what the President of the United States gave me. Yes. When the President of the United States says to me, he says, God, we're going to be with you every step of the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he meant it. Amen. And that's what I told the people of our state that we are going to give closure to these families. It took five weeks, but we were able to find all the remains of the six individuals, the six Marylanders who we lost, and be able to give their families a sense of closure that they needed and they deserved. At a time when people were concerned about what the unemployment rate was going to be for the state of Maryland in April, because there was like tens of thousands of jobs, and people who no longer had jobs, and we said we're going to work together with the private sector, and the private sector committed they would not lay people off. We made sure we had the Department of Labor that was working to get people the benefits that they needed and deserved. When people were saying we're unsure what the unemployment rate for Maryland was going to be in April because of that, well, here was the answer. In the month of April, once again, not only did Maryland achieve amongst the lowest unemployment rates in the entire country, during the month of April, Maryland actually gained over 7,000. <laughs> Reopen. I remember that first morning. It was raw. People told me, they're like, I said, how long is this thing going to take to clear the channel? And they said, well, this could take up to a year. <laughs> I said, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I got thousands of workers. Said, no, 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 it's not. What do we need to do to make you a liar? <laughs> and we were working 24-7 yes. right. around the clock with multiple units and assets. Over a thousand people were working around the clock. And what they told us was going to take 11 months. We got the port of Baltimore reopened in 11 weeks. Yeah.